Thank you very much, Professor, for both the words you addressed to me and this very interesting discussion, which I think brought us all up to date, up to date on, on what's happened and what needs to happen and so on. Uh, you didn't mention the thing that I think you deserve so much credit for, and that is the report that you and, and uh, Desires and one other colleague issued in 2015 on the question of reparations. Um, and if, if you haven't seen this, it's a real tour de force it, it, on the, the, the legal argumentation, the uh, economic calculations, the demographics, uh, everything that's going into it is, is a remarkable uh, document. It is online. Um, and so I, I recommend people have a look at that. And you deserve huge credit for it. Um, the only thing I, my only reaction to it, though, is that we need to think not only about law. Today we talked about Lemkin. Lemkin filled that gap in the law. Um, and so many attempts to deal with this problem have been essentially through legal institutions, either hoping that the legal institutions will prove themselves up to dealing with it, um, or in many cases finding that they did not. Um, and so it, it's very important um, to keep in mind also uh, the practice of diplomacy and of politics. Now, one little example uh, that I can give is uh, how the survivors of victims of the Holocaust made very little progress in the courts, European courts, until a diplomatic champion came on the scene in the form of the United States and Ambassador Stuart Eisenstein, who went, who really put a lot of diplomatic muscle into getting reparations to the extent they were achieved for the victims of, of uh, survivors of the Holocaust. Um, in the case of Armenia, uh, there are many small champions, but there is no big diplomatic champion of Armenia, except Armenia now, the state, the Republic of Armenia herself, um, who punches above her weight, I might add. Um, but so, so that's important. The other thing is domestic politics in the countries that have perpetrated genocide, particularly. I mean this country, first of all, and I mean Turkey. So we have to, uh, the laws are fine. I mean, I think we have a lot of uh, law on the books now. That gap has essentially been plugged. Although, because of Soviet Russia, uh, we didn't talk about the genocide of political or class adversaries, therefore you had the terrible things that happened in the family uh, in, in the Soviet Union. Um, but basically, the lead, what we need in law is out there. What we don't have is international, is respect for international law. It's being violated every single day um, in our age. <clears throat> and so we have to look at those supporters of the right attitude, which is politics internally, getting uh, populations, particularly in countries where people can speak out, uh, to, to get them behind uh, better attitudes on these problems, and diplomacy, because diplomacy, I hope it's all legal, it isn't always perfectly legal, uh, policy is different from law, um, but that's the other arena. Uh, that needs to be worked. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh